Hello companions, I am the Traveler. Today we journey into the depths of hell. As we delve into this treacherous realm, we'll explore the intricacies of sin and retribution. Our journey begins in the dark wood, where we find ourselves lost. The entrance to hell confronts us with a chilling warning, marking the point of no return. Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. These words are engraved on the entrance serving as a chilling reminder of hell's eternal nature. Let us embark through the very entrance of hell. Keep close for the path we tread is both dark and profound. Just beyond the gate, before we delve into the circles of hell, is the Anti-Inferno. This is where the souls of the uncommitted are punished, those who lived without making choices for good or evil. These souls are forever stung by wasps and hornets, making them bleed, which is then feasted upon by loathsome worms. Why such a punishment, you ask? It is believed by those who stand in judgment that inaction or neutrality in the face of moral decisions is a grievous sin. This realm reminds us that refusing to choose is in itself a choice. Beyond the Anti-Inferno lies the River Acheron, a boundary separating the entrance from the deeper circles of hell. Souls must cross this river to face their eternal punishment. Charon, the boatman, ferries souls across, but be warned, he is not the friendliest of figures. The very earth here feels cursed and desolate. Feel the chilling winds and touch the barren soils of hell. As we begin our exploration, remember that this is a voyage of enlightenment. While the Inferno showcases the depths of human vice and sin, it also serves as a precursor to redemption. Let us now venture into the first circle of hell, known as Limbo. A realm of sorrow without torment, it houses the souls that live in desire without hope. Feel the weight of the air, the sense of eternal longing. Unlike the deeper circles, Limbo is not a place of punishment in the traditional sense. Instead, it's a realm of eternal sadness. The souls here are those who, despite leading virtuous lives, were unbaptized or born before the advent of Christianity. Among them are great minds like Aristotle, Socrates, and Plato. Before us is a noble castle, surrounded by seven gates, symbolizing the seven virtues. Within its walls are the spirits of many great poets, heroes, and philosophers of antiquity. Behold the great poets of yore, forever engaged in discussion. Dante himself was deeply honored to be considered among them during his journey through the Inferno. These souls are the unbaptized, forever desiring the holy sacrament they missed in life. They are pure and sinless, but bound by the circumstances of their birth. Limbo is a realm of quiet sadness and reflection, reminding us of the complexities of fate and virtue. As we prepare to journey deeper into the Inferno, let us carry the memory of these souls with us. Now we shall enter the second circle of hell, where we delve deep into the realm of lust. Lust is not merely a physical desire, but an overwhelming obsession that leads us into a life of sin. Let us now embark on this journey to explore the punishments and the souls that reside in this circle. The second circle of hell is a place of eternal torment for those who gave in to their carnal desires without restraint during their earthly lives. Here we find the souls of the lustful, who are condemned to be forever buffeted by strong winds, representing the restless nature of their desires. These winds, like their unquenchable lust, sweep them ceaselessly through the air, preventing them from ever finding peace. Among the souls trapped in this circle, we encounter tragic figures from history, mythology, and literature. The most prominent of them are the ill-fated lovers, Paolo and Francesca da Rimini. Their story, as told by Dante, serves to remind us of the consequences of unbridled passion. They were drawn together by their love for literature, particularly the tale of Lancelot and Guinevere, and their illicit love affair led to their tragic demise. In the Inferno, the punishments reflect the sin committed. The ceaseless winds that torment the lustful mirror the way their desires swept them away in life. They are forever denied the fulfillment they sought and are trapped in a state of perpetual longing. May what we have seen serve as a reminder to seek balance in our lives and to guard against the all-consuming flames of excessive desire. 
Welcome now to the third circle of hell, the circle of gluttony, where we shall delve into the consequences of overindulgence and the relentless pursuit of worldly pleasures. The third circle of hell is a place of eternal suffering for those whose lives were consumed by gluttony. Here, the damned are subjected to a ceaseless torrential downpour of filthy icy rain and hailstones. The never-ending storm serves as a reflection of the unending appetite these souls had for excess during their mortal lives. Among the souls condemned to this circle, we find some tragic figures from mythology and history. Their insatiable hunger and unquenchable thirst in life led them to this wretched place. As we explore, consider the consequences of unrestrained indulgence. Before we leave the third circle of hell, we should take a moment to reflect on our own lives. Are there areas where we may be indulging excessively at the expense of others or our own well-being? Our journey through hell encourages us to seek balance and temperance in all aspects of our lives. The fourth circle of hell is a place of eternal torment for those whose lives were dominated by greed and avarice. Here, the damned are compelled to push enormous weights, representing their selfish and excessive pursuits of wealth and material possessions during their earthly lives. They labor endlessly, driven by the insatiable desire for more. The endless toil and weight of their burden mirror the heaviness of their attachments to material wealth. Just as they pushed others aside in their pursuit to riches in life, they are now pushed and jostled by their fellows damned in hell. The fifth circle of hell is a place of torment for those whose lives were consumed by wrath and anger. Here, the damned are submerged in the muddy waters of the river Styx. Locked in a ceaseless battle, attacking and tearing at each other. Their aggression mirrors the relentless anger that ruled their hearts during their mortal lives. They are forever denied peace, forced to relive their rage in a never-ending cycle. The muddy water of the river Styx represents the muddied and turbulent nature of wrath. The ceaseless violence and aggression of the souls reflect the chaos that anger brings, both to individuals and society as a whole. Are there areas where anger and hatred have taken a hold of our own lives, causing harm to ourselves and others? The sixth circle of hell punishes those who held beliefs that deviated from established religious doctrines. Here, the damned are confined within burning tombs, a stark representation of their heretical ideas. Their denial of orthodox beliefs during their earthly lives has led them to this fiery fate. The burning tombs that confine the heretics symbolize the eternal consequences of their rejection of established beliefs. Just as they denied the truth in life, they are now denied the comfort of open space and are forever enclosed in these fiery tombs. The seventh circle of hell is set aside for those whose lives were marked by violence and aggression. Here the damned are divided into three distinct rings, each reserved for different forms of violence. As we descend further into this circle, we will witness the punishments and meet the souls who inhabit each ring. The first ring is reserved for those who committed violence against others. Here, the souls are immersed in a river of boiling blood and fire, which mirrors the pain and suffering they inflicted on their victims during their earthly lives. As they try to escape the burning river, they are attacked by centaurs, representing the violence they perpetuated. The second ring is for those who committed violence against themselves. These souls are transformed into thorny trees where harpies torment them. The transformation represents the self-destructive nature of their actions, while the harpies symbolize the eternal pain they endure. The third and final ring is for those who committed violence against God, art, and nature. They are trapped in a desolate wasteland where fire and flicks of falling ash rain down upon them symbolizing the chaos and destruction they wrought. The fiery river, thorny trees, and the desolate wasteland all serve as stark reminders of the consequences of violence, both physical and spiritual. It bears witness to the lasting impact of violent actions on the human soul and the world. As we stand here in the seventh circle of hell, let us once again reflect on our own lives. Are there areas where we've harbored violence, whether in thought or action? The eighth circle of hell is a place for those whose lives were marked by deception, betrayal, and fraudulent acts. Here the damned are divided into ten distinct trenches, or ditches, each reserved for different forms of fraud. 
As we descend further into this circle, we will witness the punishments and meet the souls who inhabit each trench. The first trench is reserved for panderers and seducers. These souls are forced to march in opposite directions, whipped by demons, symbolizing the manipulation and deceit they employed to exploit others' desires. The second trench is for flatterers. These souls are submerged in human waste, reflecting the foulness of their insincere words and deceitful praise in life. The third trench is for simonists. They are inverted in stone holes, their feet burning in flames, mirroring the buying and selling of religious offices and spiritual positions. The fourth trench is for sorcerers and false prophets. They walk in never-ending circles, their heads twisted backwards, unable to see what lies ahead. This reflects their manipulation of the supernatural and their misleading prophecies. The fifth trench is for corrupt politicians. They are immersed in a lake of boiling pitch, symbolizing the stickiness of their deceitful dealings and the depths of their corruption. The sixth trench is for hypocrites. These souls wear heavy leaden robes, appearing outwardly righteous but weighed down by their false appearances. The seventh trench is for thieves. They are chased and bitten by snakes, representing the theft of others' possessions and the venomous nature of their deceit. The eighth trench is for deceitful counselors. They are encased in flames, their faces distorted in agony, symbolizing the destructive advice they gave in life. The ninth trench is for sowers of discord. They are mutilated and torn apart by demons, reflecting the harm they cause by sowing division and strife. The tenth trench is for falsifiers. These souls are afflicted with various diseases representing the contamination and the perversion of truth and reality. The symbolism of this circle is profound. Each trench represents a different form of fraud and the punishments within them reflect the twisted nature of deceit and betrayal. This reminds us of the importance of honesty and integrity in our own lives. We have now reached the final circle, the ninth circle of hell, where the traitors reside. Here, the frozen lake of Cocytus imprisons those who betrayed their loved ones, homeland, and benefactors. Brutus, Cassius, and even Judas Iscariot himself are found here. The ninth circle of hell is a place of ultimate torment for those whose lives were marred by treachery and betrayal. This frozen wasteland is divided into four concentric rings, each reserved for a different form of treachery. The first ring, named Cana, is for those who betrayed their own kin. These souls are frozen in the ice up to their necks, their tears freezing as they weep for eternity. Their treacherous acts have caused the ultimate familial discord. The second ring, Antenora, is reserved for those who betrayed their homeland or political allegiance. They are frozen in the ice with only their faces exposed. Their teeth chatter incessantly as they ponder their treacherous deeds. The third ring, Ptolemaea, is for those who betrayed their guests or benefactors. These souls are completely encased in the ice, their faces twisted in agony. They are trapped in this frozen prison for their acts of ingratitude. The fourth and innermost ring, Eudeka, is the final destination for those who betrayed their lords and benefactors. They are entirely submerged in the ice, unable to move or speak. This ultimate betrayal is the deepest form of treachery, and their punishment reflects the gravity of their actions. As our journey through the inferno comes to an end, we reflect upon the eternal consequences of our actions. Let this experience serve as a reminder of the path we should strive to follow in life. I am the Traveler. Thank you for joining me on this guided tour through hell. We hope it has been an enlightening and transformative experience for you. May you return to the world above with newfound wisdom and a desire to like, comment, and subscribe. Until we meet again, farewell, companion.